Welcome back to this edition of On Every Front, showcasing our citizen soldiers and airmen as they answer our nation's call to duty. I'm your host, Army National Guard Staff Sergeant Adam Fishman. Webster's defines diversity as the condition of having or being composed of different elements. Variety, especially the inclusion of different types of people in a group or organization. But what is it that makes people different? Diversity is not only inclusive of race and national origin, but it also includes any variety of characteristics that add a skill set or element of new knowledge to the organization. This is the National Guard's diversity program, and every Guard soldier and airman is considered a member. In the National Guard, diversity is a leadership strategy. And when I say leadership strategy, it is about creating a culture. And when we create a culture, this culture is to embrace diversity and inclusion in everyone to maximize their potential. And when we do that to every person and every civilian, not just the military members, we are able to take that next step to a higher level of performance. And when I talk about leadership, it's not just here at the National Guard Bureau, but it's just at every level of the organization to include our civilians. Why this is important in having a diverse group of individuals in the National Guard, whether they work in corporate America, whether they're working uh, in homeland defense missions, whether they're in the war fight, civilians, that brings a unique capability to the National Guard. It has allowed us to be more collaborative. Uh, we're able to work with different groups of individuals, whether they're internal or external to the organization, uh, being able to apply our core competencies with foreign languages and working with different countries. And I believe that's moving in the right direction. Recently, we were rated as number three out of the top 25 diversity councils in the United States. That's huge. What that means is, is that we have great leadership commitment. For the short term, it's great to have that. But do we have that throughout the 54 states and territories and down to the uh, airmen level, those individuals that are coming on to the organization? I don't think so. So our short-term goals is to ensure that there's increased leadership commitment. And when we get there, that will mean that every member in the organization will begin to feel like they're included, whether it's their contribution, whether it's having to look at you know, our statistics on the health of the force and making sure that our numbers go down in number of suicides, sexual assaults, discrimination and complaints. When you have an inclusive environment, what occurs is an improvement to the health of the force. So in order to do that, what we will need to do is also build on leadership development. And when we apply leadership development, it will inculcate a core value in the organization. One of the biggest challenges in the National Guard was looking at diversity as a race, ethnicity, gender issue with an equal opportunity baseline. But with every program, you start off with the basics. Now we are leveraging diversity to enhance our operational readiness. And how we have done that is that we have expanded that definition and have been able to not just include the demographics, but the cognitive piece, the global piece, and the organizational pieces of diversity where we can optically see and visually see um, the differences between our different people and categories. When we look at the cognitive piece of diversity, this is where we look at the different problem solving uh, techniques, experiences of people, different perspectives, just a wide range of having to provide different solutions to different problems. The third piece is the global piece. And that is where we apply cultural competencies, um, regional expertise, as we have our SPP program uh, that allows us to engage and partner with several different countries. And then the organizational piece is about valuing all the different military skills, Air Force skills, 
and also civilian skills and culminating that into what I believe is going to take our organization to that next level. When we look at having to work with uh, Homeland Defense and having to work with our different communities, I believe that when you look at our National Guard mission, we are already poised to be able to operationalize diversity just by the mere structure of how we're built. When we have the war fight, we also have the Homeland Defense and our security cooperation missions. We're also embedded into our communities and having to be in about 3,300 communities, living and working with the people makes it so much easier to do our job. Our diversity is our strength. It is a mission imperative. You're thinking about the organization, not yourself, but how to take the organization to that next level uh, by building aspiration. There is no argument that diversity within our ranks is crucial and a mission imperative that makes your National Guard reliable, relevant, and ready in more than 3,200 communities across the 54 states, territories, and the District of Columbia. Stay tuned and thanks again for watching this edition of On Every Front. Whether at home or abroad, your National Guard is everywhere America needs us to be. Always ready, always there.